Welcome to this episode of Hack My Growth. Today, we're taking a look at the major structured data updates from Google. Are you looking to grow your business, but you're not sure where to start? That's where we come in. So over the last few weeks, Google has made some major changes to structured data and some available rich features that you can earn by implementing structured data correctly within your website. So we're gonna be talking about these four changes and what are some of the things you need to do to make sure that your site can possibly earn some new of these rich featured opportunities. So we've got profile page structured data, discussion form structured data, updates to Q&A markup, and organizational structured data which is really a transformation of the old logo structure data into a more comprehensive type of organization data that really can help businesses across the board. So profile page structure data is designed to help with perspectives. Perspectives is this new SERP feature that you may be seeing, which is showing highlights from social sites or communities like Reddit or Quora. So profile page markup is designed for sites where the creator, it's either a person or organization, is sharing their firsthand perspective, sharing their inputs on a specific topic. So it can help Google search highlight that information, uh, like who the creator is, their profile, how many followers they have, how popular they are, right within this perspectives widget. So what is some of the required properties and recommended properties? You can see the full list of these profile page opportunities at schema.org forward slash profile page. But the main thing that is required is the main entity, and that needs to be either a person or an organization. So once you start to expand on that person or organization, you're going to have a number of other features available to you. Uh, the recommended properties, things that Google would like to see, are things like date created and date modified. Now, it's important to remember that just because these are the ones that they put out on the specific page doesn't mean these are the only things that are available to you. I definitely recommend that you look at person as well as organization markup and see what other information you want to add to give your structured data a little bit more of a rich element to it. The next type is discussion form structured data. Again, this has to do with perspectives. So the profile page has to do with the profile page. Discussion is, is more talking about the, the conversation going on within a forum or other site like that. So again, think of things like Quora or Reddit. Again, you're giving a firsthand experience this type of markup helps Google better identify a conversation, a discussion that is going on within this forum and adds a new unique perspective that they may want to show within the search results. So again, go to developers.google and look for the structured data appearance section and start to look at how this might apply to your site. Now, this is defining the original posting and the topic of that discussion. So this is generally text, but it is possible to have other media as well. You need to have an author. So the person or organization who's responsible for the content, the author's name. So you need to have who, who actually wrote it. So if you have an organization, you probably have a specific author within that organization. You need to have the date published, and then you need to have text, image, or video. And that needs to be marked up as well. You'll notice that each one of these types uh, that are underneath the properties have more attributes that you can add to them. So make sure that you're adding all of the attributes that make sense to add uh, and make sure that you're doing it in the way that follows the guidelines. I can't, I cannot stress that enough. You need to make sure you follow the guidelines. So one of the changes Google has made is within the Q&A markup. So because they're starting to open up discussion forum, uh, the original Q&A may not be is applicable as it used to be. So what they said is if you're already using Q&A for your forum, uh, they're updating the structured data so that it's more in line with what's going on in the discussion forum. Google's saying do not use both types on the same page. Now there are times where you're going to have multiple types of structured data, and we've talked about that in a number of cases where that may be applicable, but in this case, Google is specifically telling you not to do both. So use one or the other. Make sure you just decide what's going to be the most suitable for your business case. Uh, if you have a Q&A forum, something where it's like structured with a question followed by an answer, then use Q&A. This will be something like Stack Exchange, right? Where somebody's asking a question, other people are providing answers. Also applies a lot with Quora. Um, for a general forum where you just have like a forum structure like Reddit or something like that, 
uh, discussion forum posting might be more applicable in this case. So just know what you need to be using for your specific use case. Lastly, the big update is the change to organization structure data. Google used to call this logo and really they only gave you the logo parameters for your business as something that would be used with any rich feature. Now for most businesses, you've been using organization structure data for a while to give information and details about your company. What they've done now is allowed this to be part of the rich review test and Google's now using that information from your structured data to help inform the knowledge panels. So these are things like the administrative details, uh, the logos, address, contact, business identifiers, things of that nature. And you can make use of this markup uh, in a lot of different ways, which will help Google make your organization more findable. So some of the recommended properties, name, alternate name, legal name, description, and a whole lot more. In fact, there's so much more, I wanna actually go over now to the developer document and talk a little bit about that there. Organization structure data has replaced logo down here. You notice you won't see logo anymore, now you see organization. Uh, Google gives a lot of information uh, about how to add that structure data and some examples. Notice the example here, uh, we have organization, we've got the URL, then we've got the same as, these would be like your social profiles. Logo would be a logo for your company, the name of the company, description, your address is listed here. If you have a VAT ID, it would be here. If you've got an iOS code, you can add that information, contact points and more. So again, follow the guidelines. This is a big warning. If you violate the guidelines, Google may not only ignore your structured data, they may take manual action against you. So make sure that you follow the guidelines. Do not abuse the guidelines. Uh, there's a number of different types of organizations, so you can definitely go a little bit deeper. Even local business is a type of organization. So all of these things apply. These are the recommended properties. We talked about name, legal name, logo description. Make sure that you find the logo guidelines. It's a minimum here of 112 by 112. Um, you need to have your URL, add your same as, use your postal address. Make sure you understand how that's created and built up. Um, these are more information that you can use, number of employees. Any of these things that you can add is just gonna add a lot more context to your business. And it's gonna add a lot more credibility to your business. Now don't force this stuff, don't make it up. But if you have it and it is available to you, I highly recommend you go and expand your organization markup. Now again, this is only what Google's showing here with uh, the rich features snippet, but there's a whole lot more that you can look into here on schema.org. As you can see, these are all the different properties available to you. Now, one of the things that I did mention before, I'll go ahead and zoom in on this, is if you scroll down to the bottom, there's lots of different types of organization. So be as specific as you possibly can be. Uh, these are the, the top level, and within these, there's even smaller subsets. So for instance, if you go to local business, you scroll down to the bottom, there's subsets of local business, these types here. So be as specific as you can while you're creating your markup. To close out this video, I wanna give you just a quick overview of how to add this structured data. If you follow these five steps, you're gonna have a much better chance of getting it indexed properly and giving your site an opportunity to rank for those rich features. First thing you need to do is add required properties. Make sure you're reading those guidelines, you know the properties that are there and add those. Follow the guidelines. When they give you warnings, they're giving you a warning because it matters. Validate your code, use rich results test. Fix any critical errors there. If you're not passing the rich results test, you're not gonna show up for rich feature. Also run it through validate.schema.org just to make sure that everything's working. Now this is very important. Just because it validates on schema doesn't mean it's passing rich results. So you need to run both of these tests. The next thing you need to do is deploy a few pages that have this new structured data and use the URL inspection tool to see how Google sees your page. This is found in Search Console and it will help you to see uh, how Google is, is actually interacting with your page and do they read your markup. And lastly, make sure that you keep Google informed of these changes by updating your sitemap, submitting your sitemaps, updating your sitemaps, making sure that your sitemap is a good reflection of your website. That way Google knows what's going on and they can find those changes. Now, if you wanna grow even more with Semantic Search, we have a few courses available for you. There's a number of changes that happen all the time. This has been one of the most uh, rapidly changing time periods that, that I've experienced in my more than 10 years of SEO. Uh, so if you wanna learn more about Semantic Search, how you can build your knowledge graph, understand entities and take structured data to the next level, check out our courses at learn.simplifiedsearch.net.